Okay, Richard, thank you. Okay, so as Dr. Hagen said, my name is Richard Messerly. I'm a first year PhD student for Dr. Wilding and um, Dipper, the Dipper Lab. And so um, my research is focusing on the critical point and specifically the critical density of molecules that can't be measured experimentally, or at least that there aren't direct ways to measure them experimentally. And so um, because of that, I'll be performing molecular simulations to determine um, the critical density of those compounds. Um, so obviously the first question that we always ask is why is this important? And so um, first and foremost, Dipper takes pride in being um, the best thermophysical database, most inclusive. And so um, every value is important, every compound is important. Um, and the second reason is because the critical point is used through many other predictive methods for thermodynamic and transport properties and also for um, equations of state. And so um, the last two bullet points are more of why molecular simulation. So um, first off, with measuring the critical density for um, experimentally, there's a lot of, um, there's a large degree of uncertainty for that value. And also, as I mentioned, for compounds that, for instance, for the N-alkene family, for compounds beyond um, C10, they thermally decompose at temperatures well below their critical temperature. And so there have been some unique ways to go about measuring those. Um, specifically, um, Tasia was able to um, measure the um, critical temp the critical point simply by measuring it with respect to time and then backing out the time zero values, but um, those have some uncertainty and attached with those as well. And so by performing molecular simulations, we can overcome <coughs> the fact that experimentally they're not stable. So um, my, the goals of my research, the first two um, are the ones that I want to focus on today. The last three are more um, time permitting and um, won't be the the bulk of my research. So the first two, um, the first goal is to um, determine the trend of the critical density for the N-alkane family, because um, it's it's um, assumed that all families converge to the N-alkane family, so that seems like a logical place to start. But that assumption is also the second point that I need to um, test the the truth as to whether or not all families do converge to the N-alkane family with increasing carbon number. And so um, the first point is the one that I want to look at is to the infinite um, carbon number um, critical density. So just a little background as to the critical density as it's currently found in the Dipper database. The, the graph at the bottom shows that prior to 2002, Dipper assumed that the critical density for the N-alkane family increased till it reached a maximum value, at which point it leveled out um, as a constant value. However, in 2002, that was modified to um, reach a maximum and then decrease down to a lower constant value. And that was, um, Dipper made that change because of what I, the results that I previously mentioned by Tasia, where he was able to measure compounds between C10 and C16, which prior to his results, um, there are no literature values. And then Seatman performed molecular simulations to verify that indeed the critical density did decrease after reaching a maximum. And so, um, but Tejan and Seatman, they both believe that the critical density decreased to zero, which is um, a point that we're going to, that I'll discuss later. And the other two um, <coughs> points to mention are that current, or in 2008, Dipper also modified the one alkene, two alkene, and one alcohol families so that they would not only agree with Tasia's new experimental results, but also um, converge to the critical density of, of the N-alkene family. And so that's one um, theory that, that I'll be testing. And um, the last point is that there are still lots of families in the Dipper database that there simply aren't any value, experimental values for. And so to um, regress those to converge the N-alkene family is not um, possible at this time. And so um, eventually I'll be performing simulations on those families as well. So now that we've gotten to the first point of the critical density of the infinite carbon chain. 
So there's two um, theories that are out there. As I mentioned, Tasia believes that the critical density continues to decrease until it approaches zero, while um, there are other um, literature values, specifically Sinopolis, Dipper, and Nikitin, that all um, report that the critical density, in fact, decreases, but levels off at a constant value. And so um, the graph is just to help you see um, that, in fact, that's true. And so um, using their correlations. And so um, it might seem a little bizarre to, speak, to talk about critical densities um, going to zero, but one thing that's important is that there really is no physical significance to saying the critical density goes to zero as the, as the length gets infinite, but rather it's, it's, a, mathematical, um, it's a mathematical conclusion that, um, that I'm going to explain right here. So basically saying that the critical density goes to zero simply means mathematically that the critical volume approaches infinite at a rate that's faster than the molecular weight, i.e., or in other words, faster than linearly. And so, um, as you can see, the critical density um, approaching a constant value also has a critical volume that approaches infinite, but it does so linearly. And so, just simulating and determining the critical volume um, isn't sufficient. Um, the main point is found in the second bullet point for each, that the critical the, the derivative of the critical volume with respect to carbon length for um, Tasia's um, theory says that it would um, reach infinity while the critical volume, the derivative of the critical volume for <coughs> the trend that Dipper uses right now says that it will reach a constant value. And so just to put some meaning to that, basically all that's saying is that eventually the critical volume does behave like a standard group contribution method, which means that for every additional methylene group, it becomes, or it just has a constant contribution. Because um, that was the original way that um, all compounds were predicted, but it was found that with that maximum that you have to have an original, an initial point where it's less than linear, but then those terms die out and then it becomes linear. and so which is the same as saying that the contribution becomes constant. And so just to give you a visual aid for that, um, you can see Tasia's, the green curve, will continue to the, the contribution for each methylene group to the critical volume eventually becomes, or continues to infinity, while for the other three, the, con the contribution from a methylene group becomes constant. And so um, for my research, I'm gonna be determining whether or not that really does become a constant as Dipper believes or whether um, it does continue to increase. And so the way that I'm going to go about doing that is that I'm going to break up the N-alkene family into three different regimes. And so right here um, you have those three regimes as the Dipper correlation currently has it and um, the slope is essentially the, con the contribution for each methylene group on average for these for these small regimes of C24 to C28 and et cetera. Um, and as you can see for Dipper, this value becomes um, constant. And however, for Tasia's um, correlation, for, e for these regimes, the contribution is continuing to increase. And so um, this is the procedure that I'm gonna do is, and that I've started already, is um, breaking up these three regimes fitting a line to them and seeing what the comparison of the slope is. And so, um, so my work to date has only involved the trap model, which was developed by Seaton. And here's one example um, of a molecule from, from the C24 to C28, specifically in the hexacosane. And so as you can see, the, the liquid density um, agrees fairly well with the dipper predicted value. Um, predicted trend and the critical point, which is represented by the filled in um, symbols at the top, um, agrees fairly well. It should be pointed out that it's, it's already well known that the trap model over predicts the critical temperature, but um, since I'm specifically interested in the critical density, I, um, that's not, that doesn't concern um, my results, at least to, to this point. 
And so here I, I just wanted to provide the values so that you can see that, in fact, the, for this whole regime, the critical temperature is slightly elevated, but that the critical density um, is fairly accurate or fairly consistent with the dipper trend, is what I should say. So the values that I've already simulated for this first regime, so just to be clear, I haven't finished the other two regimes, but this first regime, um, as you can see, I was, I was very um, happy that they did in fact fit a very good line and that the slope was 80, which is um, close to what the Dipper trend has, but the exact value of that slope isn't so much what's important. <coughs> this kind of just shows that it is ballpark. What I'm more interested in is seeing the next two regimes and seeing if they're um, either increasing statistically or if they're um, the same. And so, as I mentioned, I'm still working on um, the other two regimes, and once I've finished those for the trap potential model, I will then be simulating the NERD, um, Exponential 6, and Anisotropic United Atoms models just to make sure that those um, are, that they give me the same results. And so basically, um, all of this is to conclude whether or not a group contribution method can be used for the critical volume of a methylene contribution to the N-alkane for the N-alkane family. And so, um, based on my results, I will develop a new correlation for the dipper values. And so, um, for time purposes, I'll just leave it at that. Um, the convergence theory, I just wanted to mention real quick, I only had two more slides, but they're just simply that I just wanted to, I'll just show the graph. So, these are the three families that dipper does have converging to the alkane family, but there have been the largest simulations are for C8 for all these families that are found in the literature. So I'll be simulating much larger compounds to verify this convergence. And then the three families that don't converge, as you can see, the blue is the N-alkane, and the other three families, um, there are very sparse amounts of simulations for those families. So um, that's the extent of my future work is just to move past the N-alkane family and to um, test out the convergence theory for those other six families. Okay, great. Let's thank Richard.